Hello and good morning, everyone. Good to see you here. Paul Training going to dive into today's master class. Hopefully today's fine and everybody well. You're doing fantastic. All that good stuff. Uh, and I would love to hear from you. So feel free to say hello in the chat as I fix my hair. Tim, what's up? Marsha, Steve, Austin. And if you're joining me from elsewhere, would love to have you say hello and head over to behance.net forward slash uh, Adobe Live. Um, I'm here every Friday and uh, you should be as well. So I'm glad you're here, Janice and Jay. We're gonna talk about, uh, I'm, so, so I spent the past two weeks um, doing an Illustrator Daily Creative Challenges that all centered around like the sort of the fundamentals of design. And that's what I want to talk about and specifically composition. And like how would you lay out a composition and uh, hopefully we'll come up with something cool. I'm sure we will. Thank you for the warm welcome. Good to see you here, Fairy and Ron Ronal. Uh, and hello, Sunflower from YouTube. <laughs> so cool. Let's go ahead and uh, jump into this if we can. I'm going to share my screen really fast. As, as you can maybe see in a second. <laughs> Some days, there we go, there it is. Oh, there we go. Well, fantastic. So again, here I am in Photoshop. I have some compositions up and uh, I just kind of want to work on how you lay out things. Uh, I want to talk about different work, right? And how things are laid out, right? So we'll take a look at real world examples, just so you know. Um, but we'll kind of just start with the fundamentals of composition uh, right now. So hopefully, uh, Rocky DeRays, I'm a big fan of Rockies. Hello, Rocky, good to have you here. So this is just, you know, again, basically a blank document. Um, key thing we need to keep in mind when it comes to composition is like, where the heck are we to post this to? Ooh, you need to put flowers on an open globe. Uh, you're talking to the right person because I put flowers on everything. Um, but uh, think about where it's going to go. So you'd want to go ahead and jump out and uh, not this site, but you would want to, I think I might have just closed it, figure out where it's going to go. Is it going to go to Instagram, right? Or is it going to go to YouTube? Is it going to go to Twitter? It's going to go to, you know, Behance as part of your portfolio. How much of the size of something is going to drive the design? Should this determine um, the layout, right? Uh, so keep that in mind. And that's actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, hey, you know what? On Instagram, the post that gets the most interaction, video does amazingly well. But what does well for still images is this portrait size, this larger size, which is actually, as we go in here and we'll change it, image size, 1080. And uh, the, it's gonna be 1080. Okay, wait for it. I'm gonna go to canvas size. It's gonna be 1080, actually let's do this. Let's undo that. 1080 by 1350. So 1080 by 1350 is gonna be the size. So it's gonna be this sort of portrait size as you can see right here. I typically don't actually create it this size. I go a size larger, so I'll go into image size, and for my canvas, I'll change this to like percentage, and we'll go 200%. Let's make it twice as large, just so we have some flexibility, because I know I want to post this on Behance and elsewhere. So that's what I typically want to do, is take this up to 200%, click OK, and then start working, okay? <laughs> it's funny. All right. So here we are, we'll just kind of start with some simple designs and I'm gonna just start with some, uh, like an ellipse tool for instance. Just kind of drag this out, maybe not the ellipse tool. Although the rounded rectangle tool can be an ellipse as well. If you wanna find the perfect center of the document, go to, right down here, new guide layout, right? Click new guide layout. And right in here I can say, hey, you know what? Give me one row and one column, right? And that's gonna give me, oh, excuse me, two rows, two columns. Wait for it, two, there we go. Uh, one row, one column, or excuse me, two rows, two columns gives me one vertical line and one horizontal line. So now I know the exact center if I wanna use that. So I can always turn that on and off. That's my guide. So when I grab the circle and I wanna draw it out right here, zoop, there it is. Right here's my lovely circle that I could work with. Of course we wanna change the color, right? Yeah, let's make a cool gradient out of it. Oh, let's do a linear gradient. 
and make something cool, right? So let's do something like that, okay? Fantastic. Um, so typically if you, this situation is prob arguably the most boring, arguably the most boring composition. It can be very bold and in your face, but your brain doesn't have to do anything. It's like, hey, oh yeah, there's a there's a big circle on a on a big rectangle, right? It's not that interesting, right? So we could still center things, but if we center things, we want to add some other interesting elements for your eye to go elsewhere. So that's the whole goal. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump out here and I'm going to replace this circle with a moon. So let's do that right now. Let's jump out, moon. Here we are, boom lovely moon sort of right here in the center, like so. Cool, we got that. Or maybe it's just a planet, because I don't want to restrict myself to uh, the, the laws of uh, astronomy and everything, okay? I don't want to stick directly to astronomy, as you can see. All right, so we have that set up. That's okay, kind of boring, right? I could play with the color. This is kind of more along the lines of what you'd get. We'll throw a background in there as well. So uh, let's just clear that. Let's jump into uh, my space folder. And if you guys don't do this, you should, because for most of my content, I already have everything kind of cut out and put in various libraries. So this, if you're doing the same thing over and over again, consider creating libraries where you start cutting out that stuff. So I have a moon texture, I have all the planets, right? Even for all these planets, by the way, I, oh yeah, good. I do have it set up that way. Every single planet I've already cut out, right? Cause I only want to do that once, right? So it's like, yeah, maybe I could use those planets. Maybe I'll take them all and drop them in here and then group them and put them in a folder, right? And those will just be the planets that I'm going to use later. Okay, there we go. So you build out your libraries. It's going to make creating compositions much faster. You grab this moon guy like so. We have him. We'll shrink him down. And this is typically kind of how I'll start uh, working. This needs a background as well. So we'll come in here and grab just a lovely space background, as you can see, like so. You can get these off of NASA's website. Just, just do a Google search and you'll find a ton of cool uh, resources as well. Okay. All right, cool. Basically, the reason I think things don't work out well for people is they don't have a very good composition. Like this alone is kind of boring. Like what's the point, right? So uh, think about that. Here's, let's get this other one, ESG. Ooh, this is beautiful too, right? Oh, it's gorgeous, all right? Couple things wrong with this composition before I even get into like the space guy. Maybe he's floating around, by the way. I might want to have him floating. I might even want to take another, um... oh, like this guy is cool too. Look at this astronaut. Sweet, right? He's pretty cool. This is, this arguably could be a selection nightmare because look at how much white is there. But let me just do this really fast. People, some people don't like the magic wand. I don't know how you feel, Janice and Mia. Like, I think there is no wrong tool, just like there's no wrong thought. It's just the misuse of those things, right? So if people are speaking in absolutes, guess what? They are probably wrong. I, I know new designers, they always want to hear absolutes. Like, tell me when to do something and give me an absolute. As you get further in your career, you know that isn't the case, right? Uh, but in general, same thing for the magic wand. I've heard people call it the tragic wand. No, it's just fine, right? We can come in here. We could just do a point sample, right? Tolerance is what we would play with, but we would click right here. And then you could see it's gonna dig in on parts of this and maybe not other parts. So I would drag this down. Tolerance of three. Let's see how pure white this is. And it's pretty pure white. Let's take it down to zero. Ooh, zero is what does it. Take it down to zero. Guess what? Your tragic wand is now the magic wand just because you know how to use it correctly. Okay, so that just really ticks me off. Can I just say that? That thing gets to me when people are like, you need to always do this and do this. That's not, that's not the case. That is not the case. There's a, there's a rhyme and reason for everything. That's why did, why did uh, Van Gogh, they told him, oh, you can't have a picture that's all blue. So he painted blue boy and guess what? Here's a picture all blue. Know the, know the rules or guidelines and then know when to break them. So that's the big thing there. 
Okay, so now that I have him selected, I'll go down here. I'll click right here on this layer mask, as you can see. I'll hold down the option key, and when I click on it, it's just gonna just going to do the inverse of that <laughs> magic wand. Or the magic wand, <laughs> Cornell. Let's call it that. Can I just say how happy I am to be here? And I've only had one cup of coffee, man. This, it's a good day to be alive, people. I got a good night's sleep, and oh, the world is my oyster. Right, there we are, just selected those inside points. And let's actually see what color. I've just filled out with the background color that we have. There we have our spaceman. Right, there he is. Move that off to the side. Boom. Do your thing, spaceman, huh? Do your thing. Let's get some interesting elements in here and let's have some fun. Okay. Shrink him down. Uh, heck, let's just make him another smart object because I'm a rebel like that. Shrink him down, he could be floating. We're gonna have other graphic elements on this. I'll do a command L for levels, right? And just kind of make this moon maybe a little bit darker. I'll play with this some more. It needs a blue tint if I'm gonna go with that background. But again, the composition is what we're gonna work on. Um, yeah, thanks, I'm, I only had one cup of coffee. The tragic part is I have another coffee maybe five feet away from me that I cannot reach. <laughs> so that's a thing that's happening. Um, let's add, so this is, this is what I'll do. I'll t let me kind of just work on this a little bit and uh, see where it ends up, okay? Can we do that? And again, I like, I like doing things that um, I haven't done before and just kind of like seeing how they turn out, right? Um, kind of rolling through some of these. There's two situations happening here, okay? Yes, I'm talking about composition, but I'm also talking about creating a whole, a whole scene or a whole image that actually works, okay? The situation here is like, I would, I would try to have the background match the moon, okay? So that's why I'd go in here. I would change this to levels. Um, I would probably maybe throw a color on top of it, right? That's one way of doing things. Or the other, the easy way, honestly, as I switch this over to be a clipping mask, right? We can give it this, this blue. And the, the, the tough thing about this is the light is coming from this side. So that means I have to go in here and I have to say, hey, for this uh, levels, and let's just get rid of this, this levels right here because you guys probably would not apply it the way I would. The reason I apply it directly to the object is just it's easier to work with in the long run. Okay, so here's my levels, right? I'm playing with the brights and the darks. Right? Hopefully you can see that. Take this down, we'll make this dark. I'd go to this levels, I'd hit B for brush, make it a little bit larger, and we'll start to remove that mask and just paint on one side. Uh, the side that has the light is all I'm doing. So it's really kind of hard to see. You could actually see it better, right, in this case. So that's typically what I would do to make that a little bit lighter on one side. And let's continue to work. Just get your job, do your job, get it done. Get it done. That's actually already looks a little bit better. We'll go to this one. We'll add a layer mask to it, right? We'll take down the flow here, right? And we'll just paint away some of that blue like so. And what I could also do is actually just paint with a different color. And that's why I made this initially a solid blue. And let's move our little astronaut guy just so he's not in the way. Right, I want to add more light to this. I'm going to go to this actual layer right here, which is my blue layer. Right, and we're gonna crank this up. Heck. To a lighter blue, let's crank that up a lot. There we go, here's that lighter blue now actually being kind of cast. It should just kind of be even more on the edge, but that's what I'm doing, just painting that blue like right on that edge right there, right? That one really needs to disappear. I really need to make that much harder, but you get the idea. Okay, that's all. Right, we have our moon. Uh, all right, there we have it. Let's take this. I typically take, if I have a bunch of stuff like this that I still need to mess with, I'll do a command G to group it. Now we have moon, 
right in here. So I'll have our moon. We have this other graphic element that I might want to deal with. We'll have the uh, you know space there, and then we have other elements that I was playing with right up there. Okay. Now with the moon, I could take that. You know, shrink it down and kind of reposition it, right? But again, I would never put something directly in the center, right? I'd probably put it off to the side and have something more interesting in this. Uh, da -da 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 -da. All right, there, there we go. I need even, I need even more highlights on this, by the way. So let's do it. Yeah, painting those highlights. Look at that. There we go. There we are, right? There we go. Now we have that pop that we need, right? Now we can see this is looking a little bit better. There might even be some other light on this side, but this is the dark side of the moon, if you will. Okay, there we go. Let's have fun with some symbols and everything too. Um, cool, yeah, look for the brightest spot on the background. Hopefully I picked that. I picked almost a, yeah, so hopefully I picked that. Good call. Um, Uh, Mikhail, you are asking a very big, long question about Maya, and I think you're doing some 3D master about master and Maya or a visual. Yeah, um, yeah, um, yeah. Go for it. <laughs> I don't know what you want to hear from me. <laughs> uh, do your best. The nice thing about even what I do today is composition has a lot to do with whatever field you deal with. So whether I'm dealing with 3D or even 2D, as I kind of shift gears and kind of work on a 2D version, right? I can think about, okay, well, what do I put in here? The center, right? We could have, we'll take somebody's face, by the way. Hold on, let's do this really fast. Drop her in here. Try to make her even larger. Here's a case where I would probably actually, yeah, it's okay. I would rasterize this layer. I would cut out the side parts. I would use my um, yeah. Holding on the shift key, I would use my magic wand tool to kind of grab all those pixels and then start to refine this. Another thing I could do, why am I even doing that? This is the fastest way to do this. I show this all the time, but right over here, what do we want to do with this image? We want to remove background. So clicking right there, it'll go through and it removes the background for me, right? So I already kind of fell back into my like old ways of doing things since I was showing you the uh, magic wand, uh, when all I need to do is remove background, right? From here, we could still see some of those parts in the hair that we need to take care of. Guess what? We'll go into that mask, right? Use our lovely refine edge brush and remove, clicking outside and then dragging in. And we could also shift the edge. We can kind of cut the edge in. See what's happening there? As I shift that edge inward, it's gonna grab more of her hair and any fuzzy edges that might be there. So that's what I'm using in that case. I'll decontaminate colors right down here. And the last thing I wanna do is just, yeah, let's just output it with a new layer as a layer mask, just to show you the difference. Um, here's the previous version. It's pretty subtle, but we actually were able to grab her hair, which is awesome, right? So there we have her like so. We can put her inside of this sphere. Um, yeah, so I've never used my, um, I, I've used 3D before. Uh, my latest one is C4D, but it just depends on like what industry you're going into. Uh, kind of determines what package you would, uh, what software you would use. All right, we got her done. Make her a smart object. Anytime you find yourself doing uh, something a lot, make it a shortcut. There we go. Let's do that, let's do that, let's do that. Make 
this. There we go. Now we kind of have her on the inside, right? And I can kind of move her around a little bit within this space, right? From here, I would add just a couple things. I think it'd be cool to do some glowing orbs around her, kind of like she's dreaming, like she's some, uh, you know, um, honestly, somebody is thinking about a different place in time. Uh, but just giving it a little bit of magic is where I would go next with this. Right, so let's do a new layer right in here. Let's take this background. And start to work on this a little bit more. I want to get this to the point where I'm talking more about uh, composites as well. So we could do something kind of like this. Let's take this a step further because I actually want this to be an even darker blue. Heck, we could even go into black. I want to do something like that. Okay, there we have it. It'd be for brush. We could sample that same color, right? Or even a darker color. And yeah, don't know if that's really working actually, to be honest with you. All right, sure, let's do that. Let's add some more to this. Uh, yes, I love the gradients. Who doesn't love gradients, huh? I'll throw some gradients in there. Why not, right? Gradients are just so much easier on the eyes, to be, uh, to be honest with you, in, in my opinion, right? It does a good job of just kind of like leading the eye and just um, makes everything kind of like nice and smooth. I'm still gonna add more to this. I think I actually need to simplify the background because I'm actually not 100% sold on it. I don't know if I want this background to really drive the design, right? So let's throw something else in there. This is much better. Already I could tell that this is much better. It is gradients, because you know me, but this is what we'd want to do. Fantastic. Gradients, is, they're just so pretty. Let's make it so pretty, right? Working through this. By the way, what did I do here? I took this, I took her, and I put her in a circle. This is like a huge thing that you need to think about. Rather than having an image, let's take her, let's group it, like an astronaut just out there floating around, right? Like this guy, he's just floating around. This, your brain kind of wants to ground it. He's just kind of floating out there. This is boring, right? If we take this and all we do is jump back there and throw a circle or a plane or something more interesting, it's going to ground him and say, hey, you know what? He's actually um, in this area, kind of floating around, if you will. So this is typically what I would do, and I'd probably flip those colors, right? So this, anytime you see a, a composition, and I should probably go to some of mine or some out there, you want to just be able to ground your pieces somehow. Like this one is grounded, right? Because she's already at the base and then there's some dark colors right there. So it already has a place to sit because you don't want things to kind of like float around. Your, your brain kind of wants to group things together. And that's what uh, this does, kind of makes this nice little uniformed group, right? From here, what I would do is I'd probably break the border Depending on the size of this, I would probably break the edge of this with the um, with this astronaut, right? Also with this astronaut, here's something else we could do for this design, which would be really fun. Can you tell that I'm working on like 12 different designs right now? Let's put that inside here, right? And we can make it look like this is like a portal where he is on the inside and he's kind of breaking out, right? So this is a perfect case where we'll take this, we'll maybe have some lighter parts of it potentially, We'll paint him accordingly, just like we were doing before. Maybe we'll use levels. I'm not sure what you guys use. I do, I do end up using levels um, a lot, but let's just paint on him really fast, like so. And we can start to paint some of these darker spots. It looks nice and loose, right? We get it. But I want to go in here and change this to, say, for instance, color burn or something darker like that. So that already looks a little bit better. But I'll typically roll through these 
overlay soft light also works, right? So again, that's all we're doing. We're just kind of painting on top of him. We're making sure the highlights are on one side and they aren't on the other. It's a little dark, I get it. It's a little dark. I would probably have a couple more layers in here, um, but you get the idea. Typically we'll have my shadow layer and then I will have my highlight and mid-tone layer. This is my highlight layer. So we'll take again, we'll sample some white and we'll go in here and we'll just paint on top. We won't worry too much about, you know, where we're painting, but we do wanna make sure that we're hitting uh, the planes of this astronaut. So grab right there, like paint right there. If it's gonna hit his thigh, that's what we wanna go for. Uh, even in this case, I shouldn't have actually painted all of that uh, white because it, it's going to flatten it out ultimately. But you want to paint where there's going to have sort of more of a splash of color. Even down here for the foot, it probably hit the foot, but it wouldn't hit his shin, right? So that's kind of how we want to treat this, right? Painting like so, and then we can go in and change this to like overlay, for instance, like that, right? Let's paint some more on his chest. Something like that. Okay, cool. To infinity and beyond, right? So there we have that. Yeah, let's add some more uh, shapes and interesting uh, geometrics. So we have in Photoshop, we can go down to uh, shapes. We'll start adding things. And this is typically what I do when I'm making something. I'll throw a lot at it. And then you wanna start editing down, right? Um, I could use some of these elements. I'm going to kind of scroll down. I'll go into some of these symbols. I have this uh, like triangle, for instance, that I can bring in. Uh, I'm not sure if I really like the rounded corners. I can always make one myself if I want to. Maybe I will. Um, but again, since this was easy to do, Here's this particular shape. You can go in. Uh, typically what you draw is you'll draw a shape. Make sure that it's not set to path. I have this set to shape. It's gonna do your last use settings. So I actually don't wanna have a fill, but I wanna give it a stroke, right? So now it's gonna have a stroke of white at three pixels, as we can see right up there, right? You can always scrub on that three pixels and increase it. Uh, the reason you're seeing red is because right up here, excuse me, pink, is because uh, we have this magenta set to three pixels, which is kind of large. I probably need to drop that down. And now I can I kind of see that, that, uh, uh, that, uh, that color kind of showing through. All right, so we have that. Let's go in here. Hit P for pen. I'm so glad that that also works for Illustrator. Click, click, come down. use that potentially as a guide. I could have also edited that shape, I get it. But uh, here's my new shape that I've just drawn. All right, how's everybody doing today, huh? Throw a little glow in there, yeah, why not? Outer glow. Here's a case as well, it's like, hey, I wanna add outer glow to this, like I don't, I'm actually not seeing it unless I'm blind. You're like, hey, where the heck is that? Right down here, effects. Click right there and you're like, oh, oh, it's not being shown, outer glow. Now I can go ahead and add it and we can make it that, uh, that white or whatever we want. Typically with glows, I actually come in and I add a couple of them, right? But if I go back down here, I can't add another outer glow. I'm like, I want to, cause like all light sources they're all um, bright in the center and then they'll be like yellow or, you know, they'll kind of taper off to whatever colors around it. So in this case, I just use a drop shadow. So come in here, add a drop shadow. It's gonna be really hard to see, but for this drop shadow, uh, we'll crank this up and notice the distance. There it is, it's just working on this line, right? We can work on the spread and the size. There we go, size is what I want. The spread is what you'll notice is affected after you apply size. But now I'm just gonna move that back. We can see that it's gonna give it this lovely little glow. That's gonna be like yellow or something like that, okay? So that's all I'm showing. You guys 
might know that or you might not. But again, this is Photoshop Masterclass, so hopefully we're teaching you some things that you don't know, right? So right in here, I'd take that, I would jump it, Command J, boom, take this to the top, because this is still kind of boring, right? It's like, it's still a boring composition. It's getting a little bit better. Um, but what would be really cool is if this, if this edge overlapped and we're playing with depth. So that's what I'm thinking right down here. Let's duplicate it. Let's drag this one to the top. And for this top one, this is where we're gonna add a layer mask and Guess what, let's just invert that. B for brush, and we're gonna paint it in. X, the X key will flip the color, the foreground and background color. So I'm usually toggling between those two uh, in doing something like this. Cool, we have that done, and that's fine. All right, so uh, more things we could do. I think this actually needs more graphics but there's just different ways we can go with this. So I'm gonna save this one and hold on. I'm back as that was saving. I was able to grab my coffee. I hope you don't mind. Uh, uh, okay, Mallory, exactly. That's so weird. I was just thinking about doing that. Perfect. That's where you wanna be. You wanna. You want to go with your gut. I, what I usually say is like, I learned a lot in art school, but really art school taught me about like why I did what I did, right? So you, you're you going to learn about the fundamentals of design, you know, and uh, use them to your advantage. But so this one's okay. I'm making composition one. I'm now going to do make composition two, by the way, because I'm going to go back to that other lady and work on her because I think she's going to be cooler, right? Oh, clever. That'd be funny if I like left the camera and then I walked into your house and poured myself a cup of coffee. That would be funny. All right, so we have that done. I'm going back to this lovely lady because I think this shows a lot more potential as a design. And this is often how all works. Like I'll start with something, maybe I'll jump back, something may or may not be working. Um, and we'll, we'll start to work on it, right? So we'll come in here, we'll add this like that. Same case where we want that like overlapping business happening, like so, right? B for brush, Let's bring it back like so. There we go, there we have it. Now I wanna add like, I either wanna add some, some more, it needs more color depth to it. You could maybe use some more glows, but honestly, this alone, as I save this, this alone is actually a pretty good design, right? There are just a couple things that are happening in here. When it comes to placing like an image <clears throat> of a person, whether whichever way they're facing, or if they're turned a direction, you wanna add space for that side. So there's a reason why I didn't like put her like directly in the center, right? We kinda, I feel like she needs to be off center and, and angled with more space the direction that she's looking. Right, so just like people, it, things need a space to go to, right? So don't, that's why I have her just like offset a little bit, right? Same thing with this triangle, right? This triangle is pretty good. Actually, it's not even centered, right? We could center it. Let's take both of these. Is that my shape? Yep. So here's, here's my shape. Remember, Command H brings back my center points. Right, and I might not have even made a perfectly centered, uh... <laughs> there we go, now we can go ahead and line that up. But now, since I've done that, I realize that even when I drew this triangle, oops, I actually didn't get it right in the center. But again, this is a vector that I'm working with. I can come down, let's grab that point, let's move it over, pop, like that. Um, and there we have it, okay? Because here's another thing that's happening, right? Anytime you have uh, lines, be careful where they end up. Like we want things maybe tight, but not touching. I would never want to bring this clear to the edge. Anytime you have two things that are like really close to the edge right there, it's like it creates tension anytime you have two things that are like really close like that. Okay, so just keep that in mind, right? So we have that, that looks, that looks pretty good. We want to make this interesting, but still uniform. Right, I could think about taking this composition. Let's move 
that up. Grab these pieces, pretty much everything. Wait for it. There we go, log that down. Because the next thing I'm gonna try is I'm gonna try to move her down a little bit. Because again, she's smack dab in the center, it's kind of boring. Let's give it like a place to go. We move it down, this is gonna be still like a little bit more interesting. And don't be afraid to give things breathing room. Even as I scale this down, right? We're giving everything just like a little bit more breathing room, right? The, the more use of negative space, tends to make things look a little bit more elegant, in my opinion. Uh, is the reason I use guides as opposed to using line tools? So Matt, I wanted to, just to get the very center of the canvas, so that's why I used guides. Usually I don't use guides, but really <laughs> when I use guides, I use it just to find the center, because you know what? I'm not good at math. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I gotta figure that out. Half of what? Half of this number? No, let's just go ahead and split the canvas down the middle. Right? Okay, so we have this. Maybe it's working out, maybe it isn't. Uh, let's grab some of these other elements in here. We have this space background, right? That we could bring in and play with, right? So what are we doing here? We're just like giving this background, just making it like a, look a little bit more interesting. And we'll start adding things at this point and it might not work and that's okay. Uh, Cool. Uh, all right, Marcos, awesome. Good to have you guys here. Awesome, need more graphics. By the way, if you need more graphics, yeah, use them because you have so many, right? Uh, latest version of Photoshop, the custom shape tool, right? Right in here, you have access to all these wonderful graphics. So I end up using a lot of these like basic shapes and saving my own typically just so you know. So that's kind of where I get my basic shapes. A lot of times I, I will use Illustrator, by the way. So I might create like, I might try something with like a radial burst or something like that. Uh, maybe I want to use Illustrator for that. Here's another thing I was working on. There's another thing. Just things. Adobe Illustrator, available on the iPad now. Imagine that. Let's just do a line. Zoop. Uh, I know this is a Photoshop masterclass, but hey, let's just, let's do this anyways. Um, distort and transform. We'll go down to transform. Because really, what do I want to do? If I wanted to create a burst, it's really just going to be one line that's, that has copies of it based on this, uh, this base point here. And by the way, like, I don't know what designer doesn't use like multiple tools, right? So there we go. It's just created that second one because I'm using this transform effect. Um, I Again, I'm not going to be good with math, but we'll do, actually, let's do this. We'll do, um, 180 divided by 15. Boom. Ooh, baby, I did it. 360 divided by 15, which is the degrees. It's going to now go all the way around. So now we have our lovely burst. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice, everyone? Oh, we did it. We created our burst, super easy. Copy it, right? Go into Photoshop, paste it in, right? We'll paste it in as a smart object. And now we have this like lovely burst that we can work with, okay? Right, burst is black, it's not gonna work. We're gonna wanna invert it, right? We're gonna wanna take this triangle and at least try that uh, original glow on it. So we'll hold down the option key, we'll grab that effect and we'll drop it on this vector smart object burst right there, okay? So now we have that burst. Ah, oh, it's way too intense. But again, at least I have a starting point. Maybe I want to turn that off. Mm. I don't know guys, I need help at this point. Help me, help me, it's too much, it's too difficult. Actually, it's pretty easy, right? I want to change this. I'm going to double click on it. I'm going to go back in here because I'm realizing that this line is too thick. Ba, 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 ba. Make it uh, a quarter of the size. Saving it. Let's go back in here. Ah, much more elegant. That's what I want, okay? Add a shadow to the burst. I like the burst. I like the idea of adding a shadow, but 
it's gonna muddy it. It's just gonna end up muddying it, so that's why I kinda wanted to do this. And honestly, I would even try fading out the edges right in here. But we still just have one item. So this is going back to composition, right? Um, you want your main uh, subject to kind of grab your attention. And then you want to be able to find other interesting little things for your eye to wander through, right? Let's go to um, this like Neptune guy, right? He is clearly, you know, like he's the dominant piece, right? All these bursts, all these lines, they act like arrows. The arrows are all kind of like pointing to his head, right? So that's our focal point, right? That's supposed to be our focal point. But it almost, to be honest with you, gets overwhelmed by the brightness of all these colors, right? So, so, so that, keep that in mind. Like color is, is dominating shape in this case. Like color and light, that's what's driving this uh, composition. So keep that in mind. But once we get sucked into it, we're like, whoa, let's look at this. Oh, there, there's all this other interesting stuff that we can kind of pan around and check out, right? It's like, oh, all these cool things. And you can just spend time looking at it. And uh, that's, that's kind of the idea, right? So we have our main focal point, And then we have our, our places for our, our brain to wander. Now, not everything needs to follow this rule, right? This one kind of has that too. It's like, she's, we're gonna look at her. And then we have all these other interesting little elements. If anything, I would push her down more so she has, um, uh, so there's more room at the top. So I'd actually kind of pull, maybe pull her down a little bit more. So there's like room to grow, right? So that's, that's the idea. But again, there's two examples, like I said, I'd show you sort of working with composition, okay? This would be boring otherwise. If I would have just split her down the middle and maybe had a flower, it would be okay, but I would only spend two seconds on it. Right? I've kind of added more, more isn't always better, but as I started adding more, it's like started to make it a little bit more interesting. And that's when we get into like editing. Oh, I actually used the same woman. I did not realize that. I mean, I did that on purpose. But there's a reason that she was cut out in the library. Because <laughs> as soon as I cut things out, I, I, not always, but I try to like, I try to save them to my library uh, for use later. So that's hilarious, okay? But for her, we'll do, we're gonna make her a little bit more astral. So we're gonna take some of these elements that we had earlier, right? She is the, the sun, moon, and planet. She is the cosmic goddess, right? That's why we're gonna use all these wonderful elements that are gonna be kind of floating around her head. Right, so take all these, shrink them down, right? These, these are not smart objects. They should be, they should all be smart objects. So let's just redo that. And again, define those shortcuts. I got 10 minutes. Uh, here's my, I mash all the keys together in S for smart object. Boom. Tab, oh, sorry, tab should go to the next. Oh, tab does not in that case. All right, anyways. I'm just making all of these smart objects because I don't want to lose their quality because chances are I might want to make one bigger than the other and I want to give myself an out. Because you know, art and design is all about changing your mind half the time. <laughs> right, let's take this down to about 30%. Shrink it up a little bit more. We'll do something like that, okay? All right, we got lucky because Golden ratio does help, you, you are right. I sometimes think, like, you, you could argue that the golden ratio, you know, it, it, know the rules and then break them. But the golden ratio, um, yeah, is something that um, we need to keep in mind, right? If you wanna see the golden ratio, just go to your crop tool, click right up here. Why is it not sh auto show overlay? Why is it not showing? I don't know why it's not showing it. Always show overlay. Why is it not showing it? Oh, well, it's showing it now. Anyway, so right up in here with your crop tool, you can go to golden ratio, like so, right? But this is a case where like, I honestly would never position something directly in the center. And that's actually not what it's telling you to do. It's telling you to actually put things on the offset on these, these lines. So just offset 
And that's kind of similar to what I've been doing is just placing things off. No, you better not crop it. So there's an auto commit for the tool as well. So be, so watch out for that. There we go. I accidentally cropped it. Okay, let's move on. Uh, lighting looks the same. So lighting is going to come from the upper left. So I'm going to keep all these planets the way they are. I'm going to turn off the sun. All of these need to be brighter as well. Uh, I'm not sure which plant is which. So all I'm going to do is I just use the, as you can see, I'm just using the command key. So what, look at my layers panel. It's jumping from uh, object or from layer to layer since I'm using the command key to select that layer. It's auto select right up here. So auto select, bam, bam, bam. <laughs> Steve, you're funny. It's good seeing you, Steve. Looks like an angry grapefruit on fire. This is, I think we're gonna have fun with this because I actually would love to have like have one of these like be the sun, right? And uh, I would show you how I would treat this, but I would love to have a really cool bright like light source up here. That would be pretty sweet. That alone looks really cool. Like look at how cool that is already. So maybe we'll hold on to the sun. Maybe we'll put it in the background and uh, maybe we will regret it later on, but who knows? All right, let's get to work, Paul. Stop, stop talking. Just get it done. We want this to be like a halo around the head. So in fact, again, since I'm lazy, this is what I want it to be like. I'll just start mocking it up, right? I want it to kind of go around her head like a halo like this. Zoop. Halo. It's amazing what a full night's sleep will do for your attitude, people. That's what I think most people need. You just need a full night's sleep. That's it. Hey, you're miserable, blah, blah, blah. You want to, like, no, don't, don't do whatever you're thinking, like making these crazy changes. No, you just need, maybe, maybe you just need to go to bed. <laughs> John Mulaney has a joke. He's like, do my friends hate me or do I just need to go to bed? <laughs> Your friends don't hate you. You just need to go to bed, right? <laughs> Love John Mulaney. John Mulaney was in Sneaks. Uh, with me last year and this year we have Chelsea Handler. So Chelsea Handler is going to be our guest for Adobe Max Sneaks. If you're not aware of that, go to the Max site later, <laughs> but um, uh, it's going to be awesome. Uh, yeah, so she's, it's, it's all going to be online, it's all free, and we get to show all this cool new technology, uh, which is going to be a lot of fun. Okay, these two look similar, so I'm going to kind of flip them like this one up here better, right? I'm so glad we're doing this, everyone. Like which planet do you put in which location, right? I would probably put this one like over here, right? Like that. Okay, this one, we wanna show the depth. Maybe we'll make this one. No, we'll make it, we'll keep it that size, but we wanna put it behind her head right there. So that's when I'll drag this, of course, behind her head like that. Okay, that's the idea. All right. As I get quiet, you know, I'm really starting to think about some of these things, right? I'm realizing that I'm almost adding too much. Oh, Michelle's excited for Max, good to see. Uh, yeah, sleep is the secret to all creative endeavors. Oh man. And just taking breaks and having fun. Do things that inspire you. Uh, uh, okay. All right, so, um, but now I'm kind of adding too much. So this is why I go into the editing. Oh, you added all these planets. That's gonna be interesting. Maybe turn, at least for now, turn off some of these other elements. Maybe turn off those bursts, right? I'm not even sure if the triangle is working at this, at this point, 
right? But I'd go in and I'd start to edit this content. Let's just group this together. Let's make this the astronaut. That, turn that off like so. Um, and I still have this ellipse. Let's take this ellipse, let's maybe drop that effect on it. And maybe we use it instead of the triangle, okay? Maybe, maybe not. Again, we're still working through this, right? So I'm editing this down, I'm turning off everything. I'm considering using this ellipse and erasing the parts we don't need. B for brush, X to put the black in the foreground, paint over it, right? Get rid of it and do something like that. This is also that, oh, you liked the ellipse? Yeah, okay, good, you, you like the ellipse that I just added. So let me put it behind everything, by the way. But this is really helpful to me too. It's like, if you're working on a composition and something's not right, step away from it, go do something else, come back to it. What helps me is I'm actually looking up at my output for this live stream and the fact that I'm seeing it smaller and not so large is actually helping me kind of realize what's working and what isn't because ultimately this is going to be on Instagram. So it's going to be like this size. I could have also just shrunk it down. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so that's all I'm doing is kind of like playing with the size. So this might be gorgeous, large. It might, some of the details and, and stuff might be lost uh, if we shrink it down. Okay, enough of that. Stop talking, Paul. Of course, I don't know. Kind of my job. Tony Howard, you could always rewatch. Would love it if you you rewatched re this. Um, be awesome. You can always scrub back. I think this needs to be thinner, so we'll go with one, uh, one point thin line. And there's a thousand more things I would do with this. You know what I would actually do with this? Like that path, this lit line. Ah, oh, I want to do so much to this and I don't have much time. So let's just get, let's just stop talking. Let's get to work, right? Let's make it a great day. Let's bring this out, back up to the top. B for brush. Paint over this. That's what I would do. I would make sure that the line looks like it's actually like penetrating and let's actually i should be using a hard brush a hard edged brush right hold down shift command wait is that right no that's not right oops i just moved things all over the place someday you some days you remember your shortcuts and some days you don't <laughs> there we go shift uh closing bracket will change the uh <laughs> Uh, we'll change the bah, um, brush hardness. So that's all I was doing is changing the hardness all the way up. But I was using the shift key to do that. And now I can come in, hit X, right? It's gonna be, because I just want this to be like a real solid line. I would actually make it, a, give it a bright dot right there is probably what I'd do as well. So if I wanted to paint on that B, actually no, not, yes, new layer, group, bam. Bam, so many tips. Option key, drag that on the folder. Cause what do I wanna do? I want everything. I want to have more elements that are lit up the same way. So now we'll have our astral lines, right? And we'll have these like burst things. And then we have our ellipse right there. Okay, so that's what I'd wanna do is right in here. B for brush, make this smaller, but this is where I'd wanna have boom, like that light right there. See, that's what I'm going for, is have that kind of look like it's connecting. It's off actually a little bit, so we could always erase that or undo it and undo this part like that because it should probably hit right there on this layer. I'm having too much fun with this, so uh, stay tuned. Just like keep an eye on my Instagram <clears throat> the color tone of all these need to be work on. Uh, <laughs> just That's pretty much what I did, <laughs> Wade, is I pretty much hit all the shortcuts and then eventually found the one that worked. But things were flying all over the place. Because if you use shift command, open close bracket, you start shuffling the layers in their layer order. So that's what I was actually doing. I was like, ah. Oh. <laughs> 
All right, got that burst. B for brush, make it smaller, like that, right? So again, you get how that works. I could actually take all of these. I wanna make all of them brighter, right? Again, I would probably put them all in a folder. I would go out to, and we could try curves if we want to. Clip the curves to that layer group, which happens to be the planets, all right? And with those curves, we can go ahead and adjust their brightness, right? So taking that up, making it darker in places if I want to, uh, but I need to make them, make them the same sort of light intensity uh, as it is for her, right? Okay, let me just finish this ellipse because this is really bothering me how this is set up in some parts. Take that down like that. It's so good, yeah, oh yeah. Oops. Just finish it, gotta finish my job. I'm gonna zap into that one somehow like that. And let's paint with the verse really fast. I only have a couple more minutes. Oh no, I'm down to my last minute. Ah, all right. Uh, I'm gonna finish this. I'm gonna post it to Instagram and all those fun places. So stay tuned for that and see where it ended up. And thank you so much for watching. Jason Levine is up next. So stay tuned for some video and audio magic. Thank you so much, everyone.